In Ecclesiastes, the Bible says whoever loves money never has enough. And that's definitely true when it comes to our state government, which is facing the largest budget surplus in years. And yet there's still a big battle over whether any of that can be returned to taxpaying families. Plus, we're going to talk about how much of that budget goes to Planned Parenthood. Welcome to Speak Up Virginia, equipping you to speak up on the life, family and freedom issues that matter most to you. From the Family Foundation, I'm your host, Candy Cushman, and I'm joined today by our president, Victoria Cobb. Well, before we get into today's more serious money discussion, I thought we'd start out on a fun note talking about what kind of money problems you might expect when you combine kids with cell phones or even Alexa. Because I've been seeing some crazy stories out there about kids doing things like buying cars. I, I saw a story the other day just with this toddler that accidentally got the top bin in a car on eBay. (laughs) It's just, I don't know how you do that. Um, But I know you've experienced a little bit of this craziness, right? I have. Now, I will say my kids are better than the one I saw, which was a kid that ordered like a house full of furniture. And I was, I just was wondering like how he pulled that off. But, but I, we have had this happen. We had a very funny one um, with our son, Daniel, actually. Um, He apparently ordered an Uber when he was literally like two and a half, three years old, and I had no idea. He had grabbed my phone and somehow hit the Uber app. And I guess it really is, pr- it's pretty easy. You just, you know, yes, you want it. Yes, you want it here. And I didn't know it till I pulled out of the driveway and there's a car there. And I thought it was really odd that there was a car and a guy <laughs> waiting in it. Long story short, you then get a call. If you don't show up for your Uber, they call you. And he had kind of a, a, a troubling accent, so I was trying to figure it out. And then I oh, wait a second, Uber? No. And then I realized, because I've got my phone at this point in my uh. hand, and I realized he, it was on the counter, and he had literally grabbed it and ordered an Uber. So that was kind of a funny one. The expensive one was when one of my boys actually went on our, you know, you can order video games off of your television. And, um, you know, like you would buy a movie. Mm-hmm. And one of our sons bought a $60 video game. I didn't even know video games cost that much, really. And I thought to myself when it happened, I thought, and it was just a kid playing with remote. I mean, yeah. he was young. But I literally thought, couldn't you have just bought like a $4, you know, on-demand movie? That would have been a lot cheaper. Yeah. So we've had, yeah, we've had some pretty entertaining things. Well, you're not the only one. I had a friend the other day tell me about a kid playing with their cell phone. And I guess, you know, they can start re- like renewing their lives or getting more fuel on these video games. And it, it added up to $100 by the time he was done, like just renewing his times to play the games. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. Our kids, video games have such built-in cash yeah. making opportunities and it's really not right because these kids should not be spending money on video games while they're playing the game it's not like they're buying a, a single game it's they've already bought the game but if you want to get better right you know spend this and of course your kids have control of it so our kids have been very clearly schooled on that that is not happening in my house all right well diving into today's topic our new governor governor yunkin has really been turning up the heat trying to overcome these partisan obstacles to giving virginians some much needed tax cuts With just a few weeks left in the General Assembly, the budget that they have to pass really has become the center point in all the discussions right now. And Governor Youngkin put out this letter calling attention to the fact that we now have a huge budget surplus in Virginia at historic levels, which means, as the governor summarized, the state has been overtaxing its citizens. Yeah, the numbers are actually pretty crazy. As the governor explained in his letter, of the roughly $13.4 billion, that's at the B, billion dollars in unanticipated revenue the state will collect in this budget cycle, he is asking the General Assembly to return just $4.5 billion, right? So they've got this huge extra, and he's saying, can you just give this piece back? And of course, you start hearing the usual cries from all, you know, everybody under the sun. Well, you know, they can't afford to return this to the taxpayers because we need all this funding for schools, and, you know, the list goes on depending on, on who's saying it. And But the thing is, the governor pointed out, it actually still leaves $9 billion in new revenue to invest in all these things. So, you know, seems reasonable to me. Okay, so if that's true, the governor's got his facts right and everything, which I'm assuming he does, what is the big controversy over? Because I'm just looking at, you have unprecedented inflation, you are probably going to have gas prices go up even more if this Ukraine thing doesn't settle down. Um, you know, why are, do we not have basic bipartisan agreement on this? 
I think there is always a place to spend money, and they always see that as their money. And honestly, I think there are legislators that actually philosophically disagree with ever giving money back to a taxpayer. But you mentioned gas prices, and I don't think anybody here can resist talking about the headache of gas prices. So people are feeling it. I, I mean, we are almost at the Virginia all-time high gas price. So $4.01 is the highest gas price we've ever had in Virginia. And we are at like three, the average is like 387 or something. So this is a big deal. This is something that people feel in their wallets. Well, do you think with the liberal mindset that it's just so ingrained in their mindset that they're so sold out to that kind of government control that even the political pressure is not enough to want to put some of that money back in people's pockets, even with political pressure? Well, remember, there's the pressure of returning the surplus, but there's also the pressure of all the school public unions saying we want more funding Mm -hmm. invested and all the hospitals saying we want more money. You know, so, uh, yes, there's political pressure, but it does go both ways. And Mm -hmm. that's the frustration. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get into the nuts and bolts of this a little bit. When the governor talks about returning this money to taxpayers, which you can argue was theirs to begin with because it's this surplus from overtaxing, how exactly is he proposing to do that? Well, one of the biggest proposals that impacts families and specifically their day-to-day expenses is that he has proposed cutting the grocery tax, which is a really big deal and would be really helpful to folks. Is what he is proposing, is it going to be enough that we would actually feel a difference, that it would, you know, we'd feel a real impact? Well, yeah, for sure, because your grocery bill will go down. But what's important about the grocery tax, and this people need to understand, there's only 13 states that have a grocery tax. And you know why states don't have a grocery tax? It's the most regressive tax we can have. And what I mean by that is it hits the poorest people who can't afford it. Because if you can buy nothing else, you have to buy food. And so out of every tax we have, that's the first that should go because it's going to help the economically disadvantaged the most. And Virginia is really one of a few states that has it. It's it's outdated. It's it really we should not have one. How do they justify that in the first place? Well, that's the irony, I think, is honestly because it's liberals hanging on to this tax and liberals claiming that they're the hero of those that are impoverished. It doesn't add up, but people don't realize who's actually, you know, in favor of the family. Really good point. Now, he's also proposing cutting gasoline tax, which I personally would appreciate. Where do you think that's going to land? Gosh, I think we would all appreciate that right now. I have less optimism around the gas tax than I do the grocery tax. Like if we get one, it's going to be the grocery tax, I think. But it's really important because, again, how do people get to work? You, if, if you're not driving, you're on a bus that also uses gas that jacks up bus fares. So these are things that hit people in the, in the very closest to their own budgets. All right. Well, some of the other things that he has proposed include uh, tax rebates around $300 per individual and $600 per married couple. That sounds nice. He's thrown out there um, some standard deductions that would be pretty significant and also military tax relief. Do you what do you think about those? Do you at this point, do you think those are getting through or do you think this is mainly focusing on the grocery tax relief right now? Well, I will say when he was campaigning and throwing out all of these different proposals and now he's actually moved forward and tried to put them in, I, I did think at the time and I still think you're not going to get all those. There's there's no way out of our general assembly they're going to approve all of those. And so um, I, I like the standard deduction doubling. You know, we have a $9,000 yeah. for a married couple and he would literally encourage it to be double. That's a big deal for a lot of yeah. families. But bottom line, it's not going to be all of these. It's going to be maybe one, maybe two. But, um, you know, he might, he might be able to give back the uh, – the three hundred or six hundred dollars uh, that that might happen. Yeah, maybe the military. Would yeah, be a military. Good place. I think it does get that they tend to get favored status in the general assembly, mm-hmm. and they should. I hope so. Thanks for joining us for Speak Up Virginia, brought to you by the Family Foundation. If you're enjoying the show, help us encourage others to speak up by giving us a five star review and sharing it with friends. Thanks for listening. Well, is there a bigger picture here? I mean, shouldn't we be looking at a better tax system if we are overtaxing to this degree? It it doesn't make sense to me to keep overtaxing and then battling every time to give it back. So can we fix the bigger system here? Uh, We do have a very complicated tax structure. And people used to say, if the government made it so that you just wrote a check to the local government, check to the state government, check to the federal government every year, taxes would come down. But because it's on your food and it's drizzled out through your Mm -hmm. gas people basically, it's sort of like, it's just part of our lives and we don't even know how much we're paying in taxes. So the pressure, the political pressure doesn't grow to the degree it should. But if you literally stroked a physical check for all your taxes, I think the politicians would have to respond because there'd be such outcry. Maybe one year we should just make a symbolic check. 
I was a big fan. Do you remember back in the day when Herman Cain ran for president and he did the 999 and his concept was we need to simplify the tax structure because it's, I mean, if you have thousands and thousands of pages at the federal level on the tax structure, no one can understand it, let alone navigate their lives around it. And honestly, Virginia code is not that bad, but it is not good. I mean, Mm. we, we make it complicated. Well, I hope this is a step in the right direction and we can keep conservatives coming back so they can continue to reform this. But another thing we wanted to talk about, which isn't covered at all in most of our Virginia media, is this issue of funding abortion and Planned Parenthood in our state budget. Now, I know last year our team really worked super hard to fight legislation that funds or covers abortions. Um, I know that was happening through Virginia's Obamacare Health Exchange Program, for one. But sadly, the liberals jammed it through anyway, and Governor Northam signed this into law. Yeah, that was really disheartening to watch, not only because it meant that more innocent babies were going to lose their lives, but it's really just completely unnecessary, given how much the abortion industry is actually getting from our state coffers in other ways. They get all sorts of little uh, allotments, grants, things that that basically they get, oh, we're going to create a program for this, and then the money flows right through that block grant into Planned Parenthood. And we discovered at the FOIA request that basically they're getting like $6 million in our budget with Planned Parenthood and and other abortion providers. And when Victoria says FOIA, she means Freedom of Information Act. And that's something our policy team did, right? They did a did Yeah, they do a and this is something, this is just simply means asking the government a question. You as a mm. taxpayer have a right to know certain things. And so you just ask them the question and they have to answer. Although you need to do it in a very careful way because if you don't ask the right question, they will not volunteer the right answer. And even if that $6 million doesn't all directly go straight to abortions, you know, I'm pretty sure it's still freeing up money and resources to build up the abortion business as a whole, right? Yes. It's almost always fungible. You know, it's a little shell game. You know, we're going to put it under here and then we'll move around and magically it will actually help the abortion industry. And so um, I can remember when the Virginia League of Planned Parenthood announced its grand opening of the State of the Art Health Center, which health, I just can't even say that out loud, but that is what they called it in the East End here in Richmond. And they were projecting that it would double the number of clients to 20,000 visits per year. And it was very clear to me. And, you know, I mean, I can't trace the line exactly, but it happened right around the same time. We had just really amped up the amount of money that they were getting in our state budget. Yeah, I think it's really sad that it was pretty obvious that a lot of this abortion growth was able to come through because of the expansion of these various funding streams. And I know our team has not given up fighting those things, that they are monitoring that whole situation in our state budget very closely this year again, right? Yeah, we've been fighting it every year for as long as I've been at this organization. And it's basically a couple things. Make sure the state doesn't fund abortion directly. We, it's called the Hyde Amendment. You know that money is not going to go to the procedure of abortion, but it's more than that. The, we're really trying to get a what we call the prioritization bill, which simply says if there's a service that can be done and we want to fund that service, let's prioritize the entities that don't also do abortion. Let's make sure that we're, we're putting it in places that isn't going to end up in the hands of an abortion provider. Yeah, that's great. Well, it's that time again. Time for our Inconceivable Moments Award. This is where we're featuring examples of the absolute lunacy and craziness that happens when cultural leaders try to give guidance completely apart from biblical principles. And we're calling this the Liberals' Most Inconceivable Moments Award. Inconceivable! You know, there's been a lot of news headlines lately about how parents are being grossly disrespected in some of these larger, more liberal northern Virginia school systems. And, you know, a reasonable person might assume, well, maybe a lot of this has to do with some misunderstandings or people not communicating with each other. Well, in case you might be thinking that, I'd like to give you Exhibit A, the recent display in the Langley High School Library in Fairfax County. I'm looking at a photograph here that a concerned citizen took during an eighth grade open house event. And on the table in this library is a sign that says stuff some adults don't want you to read. And behind this sign are books parents have been speaking up about lately, including Gender Queer and another book that has extremely graphic content. Um, One of these books includes very graphic images of sexual activity that I'm not going to explain on the radio, but it is definitely not appropriate for eighth graders. Yeah, there seems to be this weird trend in the Fairfax area specifically with libraries doing what amounts to sticking their thumb in the eye of parents. A few months ago, we talked about another Fairfax library that was had this weird display of troll dolls in a glass case holding sexually explicit books that had been protested by parents alongside, guess what? 
the Bible was also there. It was so bizarre. I'm not sure what they were trying to say, that they were just trolling the parents and Christianity at the same time. I'm really not sure. Well, I think what it definitely reveals, regardless of how you want to interpret that whole thing, is this elitist disdain and even, I would say, openly mocking um, openly mocking attitude toward the parents that some of these educrats obviously have. And back to the Langley High display, I guess the good news is that parents are not backing down. They are documenting the stuff. They are not just allowing themselves to be run over or mocked. And we probably would have never known about this display if they weren't, you know, bold enough to take pictures and, and explain what was happening. But because someone did document it, Laura Ingram picked it up on Fox News. And let's just listen to her take real quick. Have these per people are nothing after the defeats in Virginia? Have parents not made it clear what they want? Stay out of this business. Teach the kids what they need to know. Parents have to remain vigilant. No matter what progress that we feel we've made politically, this is where things are headed. I think Laura's point is so powerful because it's easy to feel intimidated and overwhelmed as a parent if you're in one of these, you know, well-funded liberal districts where they just don't care. It's easy to feel like you're not going to make a difference, that your voice doesn't matter. So this is just a great example of how one person just simply documenting the issue actually gets it to national attention and makes national impact. Yeah, I really want to emphasize parents need to not give up, continue to work together, continue to hold their feet to the fire. We don't want to roll over make it easy for them to not only disrespect community families like this, but also desensitize kids by aggressively promoting sexual experimentation. I mean, that's that's the bigger issue going on here. Yeah. And, and to that end, I just want to mention that we do have on our website, I think we've mentioned it before, the school incident report form. And that's something that just makes it so easy for parents to report things like this. You can find it at familyfoundation.org slash protect every kid. Yeah, let me just say that again. Make sure you got it. That's familyfoundation.org slash protect every kid. And I should also mention in this case, the Langley High School was forced to apologize after this photo went viral. The principal put out an apology for the sign saying, quote, poor judgment was used in its display and explained the sign has been taken down. But I think they may have missed the whole point here because when I looked at this apology note, it just said, the sign had been taken down, and that thing was said about the books at issue here being promoted to kids. I guess that means we'll still have to give Langley High School Library this week's Inconceivable Award for thinking they could openly mock concerned parents, really pretty much to their faces at an open house, and get away with it. Thanks for joining us for this week's Speak Up Virginia, brought to you by the Family Foundation. Visit us at familyfoundation.org. That's familyfoundation.org. See you next time. And don't forget, we are stronger when we speak together.